Hello, it's Mark from Worth It Repairs, and today we're working on a Samsung Z Flip 5, and we're doing a screen replacement. The folding screen is broken. Let's turn it on and see what it looks like. And it's not turning on. So we'll grab out a charger here so then we can see how broken it is. All right, so we'll plug it in here and see how broken it is. If I can get it plugged in. Perfect, and it's definitely broken. You can tell by the big black screen and the yellow screen. The outer screen isn't broken, and that's gonna be a hard thing to get off without it breaking, but we'll see if we can get it off without breaking it. So first, we're gonna start off with that screen and just try to heat it up for 10 minutes on our heating pad. Hopefully this guide helps you guys save money and you can repair it yourself. So we'll see how easy it is. I fix it, made it seem really easy to take apart the Samsung Z Flip 5, but I, unfortunately, in my experience, it was really hard to take it apart. Honestly, you can't use a plastic pry tool to get underneath the glass. Maybe I just didn't heat it up long enough. Maybe I just wasn't taking my time, but I had to bust out the metal pry tool eventually up here in the video. Please like and subscribe and watch the whole video because it helps my analytics. I would much appreciate it for all the hard work I do putting these videos together for you guys. Here we are. We got the metal pry tool and we can at least get underneath the glass just enough. And we'll start right here on the top where the cameras are because we want to make a spot for the plastic pry tool to work our way around the screen side of the outer screen. We'll get some alcohol, maybe that will help loosen the adhesive. And it did a little bit, but I try not to use alcohol when taking the back off because I don't want the internals getting alcohol all over it and eroding the parts inside. We'll stick the plastic pry tool in and then work our way around the outer side of the outer screen. And hopefully we don't break anything while we're doing this and then just stick the tool in a teeny bit, not too far at all. And we'll get a guitar pick in there as well. It's a little bit wider, so I'm having a hard time getting it in. Uh, but we'll put this guitar pick in it to like, prop it open while we work our way around the edge. And the hard part is when you get by where the frame is and where it bends and flips because it flipping needs to be fixed. And we got to flip and fix this thing as flipping fast as we can because uh, they are from out of town and they're waiting for me to repair this phone for them. You guys better be flipping commenting on this video because it's flipping great. Flipping, yeah. <laughs> Flip, yeah. Now we flipping got it open, so now we can see where the ribbon cable is, and we'll try to lift it up straight up and break the adhesive free right here on the bottom. So then we can lift off the outer screen, and then we will be able to disconnect the screen. But I'm going to plug it in here and see if I broke the outer screen. And I did. Dang it. I'm going to have to replace the outer screen now. So I recommend ordering the outer screen just in case. So if this happens to you, then you have the screen on hand. I should point out that there is a plastic cover that you remove and then you grab a flat end of your plastic spudger to disconnect the outer screen. And since it's turned off, we don't have to worry about it uh, being turned off. All right, so now let's get a better look at the inside, half of halfway inside the Samsung Z Flip 5. It's flipping not so great, you guys. This is not a good phone. It's not looking good so far for the repair. I'm not really liking the repairability compared to the Z Flip 4. And the Z Flip 5 is a little bit more repairable because the batteries are removable. But the front camera is glued in and there are a couple things and I will show you throughout the video. Next, we'll grab out our PH000 screwdriver and start unscrewing all the screws. Of course, that's what you got to do when you repair a Samsung. But these you want to keep track of where they belong because they belong in certain places. 
First off, we're going to try to remove this metal bracket. It looks like it's holding down the battery connection. We'll find out here in just a moment. It looks like it's that orange connection that's wrapping over on the right, but it's normally an orange connection. So we're going to look for the battery connection, but we'll just get all these other screws removed while we're at it. Since we already have our PH000 screwdriver out, we might as well take the screws out. Now we got to find the battery connection. It isn't that orange one, but there is one right underneath the orange one that looks like it's the battery connection. This is the battery connection right here in red, and this is one of the batteries out of the two. There's two batteries powering this phone, but if you disconnect one, it will make the phone power off fully. All right, we're going to try to disconnect these FPC connectors at their flat end of our spudger. In the spudger I have, the flat end was a little beat up, so I was kind of having a hard time getting it to disconnect things, and then I just used my fingernail and pull it off. Once the battery's disconnected, using your fingernail isn't such a bad thing. Just saying. If you would want to watch the full-length version, you'll have to join my channel for its perks. To get out the main board, you're going to need to remove the SIM card tray. I don't know how long I've been doing repairs for, but I can't believe I forgot to take out the SIM card tray. This thing doesn't even run on a SIM card, and it's uh, got a SIM card tray. All right, so we'll grab a uh, plastic spudger at the pointy end and poke right here where the SIM card tray comes out, right on the side, and then you can lift up the main board. And the main board is what stores all the data, so be very careful with it. It's important to look at the new part to see what parts you're going to have to transfer over, what small parts you're going to need to transfer, I should say. And it looked like I had to replace or transfer over this power button. And it was really hard to get out and I used some bended tweezers and got it out, but didn't realize that the power button is underneath it. And luckily I didn't break anything, but I was managed, I managed to get it out and putting it back in was really hard and you'll see i almost gave up on the repair at the point of putting it back in you know i just got to remind myself sometimes that you just got to keep trying at it just keep trying and keep trying again when you have to put the power button back in like i had to just keep trying and eventually you'll get it in i think i think i may have gotten it I think I got it. I got it, you guys. I got it. I got the power button in. Yes, we can move on with the repair and we can continue doing this repair. I give the repair ability score a one out of 10. It is terrible. So you guys might be wondering what price I might charge for this repair. Well, I would charge probably like 350 Normally like $100 more than what the part is. But now after repairing it and watching myself repair it again after repairing it, it makes me think that I probably should charge a lot more for this repair. Let's say, how about we say $450? Or just email me, mark at worthitrepairs.com and maybe we can get this set up. Hard time getting this 5G antenna to sit flush inside its little spot. So I decided I would do what I gotta do and remove the metal bracket around the 5G antenna and use adhesive to hold it down. Now it's time to get out the front camera and it's glued down. So you'll want to grab some fine pointed tweezers or some tweezers you don't mind bending up a little bit. So we'll use a little bit of alcohol to loosen the adhesive and then we will just stab the uh, glue around the edge of the camera to try to break it free without damaging the camera. This part is really hard and you could end up breaking the camera. Just so you're aware of what you're getting it to in this repair, it has a repairability score of a one out of 10. So I don't recommend trying this repair if you're new to repairs. Hire an expert like me. Now for the easiest part of this whole repair where you remove the battery and all you do is grab this pull tab and pull on the battery and it comes out. Perfect. Now we can grab out the main board and put it inside the new frame and housing. 
So I like to use the liquid adhesive to hold the battery down over the time period of when the repair is done after I clamp it and everything, it's held in there good. But it for at first, you just can't hand out the phone right away when you use the liquid adhesive, but then it'll make it manageable to take out the battery with the pull tabs if we need to take out the batteries for some reason in a future repair. So that's why I use the liquid adhesive instead of taped adhesive. Now we'll connect all the connectors to the main board except for the battery connector, but leave it right on top of the battery connector so then if we need to connect it to test it. So uh, we'll move this little proximity sensor thing over. That's something I missed that I had to grab to move over. I'm not quite sure what it does. Now we're gonna heat up the back glass of the phone so then we can take out the charge port and the other battery, the easy part. Now that the back is removed, we can remove these two PH000 screws holding down the battery connection and also uh, the wireless charging pad. We'll remove this little piece of tape with our pointy end of our plastic spudger to get the wireless charging pad completely removed from on top of the battery. And um, I tried to pull it off, but I decided I would unscrew the loudspeaker and charge port first before pulling it off all the way. Once you remove all the screws from the loudspeaker, You'll bend it backwards and then you'll grab it with your fingers and then pull off the loudspeaker. Then there's one PH000 screw holding down the charge port and you'll want to put it in the new frame and housing right away. And the uh, ribbon cable that holds down the screen connection has to be bent in a certain way. So it's important that you bend that first before you lay down the charge port. We'll put in the battery and we'll put it back together. And we'll test this thing out before we fully put it back together with the outer screen put on and everything. Thank you for watching my video, everyone. If you want to watch the full length version of this video, you'll have to join my channel for perks. It's $2.99 if you just want to be a beginner basic tech or you could jo join more to help influence my channel for better content like this. This repair took me about an hour to do, so I'll have an hour long video on my channel. Stay tuned into my channel and just subscribe to see when I post the full length version. Thanks for watching again. Woo! We fixed it. It was worth it.